be discussing the use of retain as a as a management tool and uh, for for hopefully improving the post harvest storability. I'm not going to go into um, a lot of what it is and how it works, as Ian has really done that. Um, the active ingredient AVG. Um, it is been around for, for a long time um, as a, the, the active ingredient, um, but I'm going to talk about Retain as it's the only uh, product that's registered that has AVG as an active ingredient, so it's probably easier to, to just call it by its name. Um, it's registered in South Africa on apple, plum, peach, and nectarine currently. And as Ian already mentioned, um, it blocks ACC synthase or the, the action of ACC synthase, which inhibits the production of uh, ethylene, which is different from the mechanism that um, Harvista has where it blocks the ethylene receptor. So it's, it's very important to understand the difference between the two products um, because when you start using the product, you need to, to take this into consideration. So it does not prevent the action of ethylene. Okay, that's very, very critical to understand. It blocks the production. Once the ethylene is there, you're not going to get any response by applying retain. That's when Harvesta comes into play. Okay. Um, because we delay the activity, or we, we inhibit the activity of ACC synthase, um, we reduce the ethylene production, um, but to what extent it happens is very much dependent on the timing, the dose that we apply it at, and the specific cultivar. But typically what you will see, and this is just an example of, of GALA, um, the, the top line is the untreated control, and you see the, the increase in ethylene production towards harvest. Um, if you apply too low a rate, you'll get that pink line, which is a quarter rate of the, the registered um, rate of retain, whereas the maroon line will show you to what extent you reduce the ethylene um, production by applying the full rate and even a, a better response when you apply twice, but maybe that's a bit of a, a costly um, application. Um, so if you look at the plant responses, and a lot of these things um, have already been mentioned by Ian, so I'm going to try and um, make up some time by not um, uh, spending a lot of time on all of these things, but one thing um, which he did not mention was uh, when we use retain on stone fruit, um, very specifically to reduce soft tips. Um, and we heard this morning from Richard that, again, some cultivars had problems with soft tips um, and then resulting in problems in the marketplace. And also we find that it, we can maintain um, post-harvest firmness better in stone fruit by, by applying. And this is just an example from work um, done by Ari de Kok on plums. And specifically, if we look at um, harvest three, you can see the um, maintenance of firmness in those plums um, after harvest and after storage and shelf life. Okay, so moving on to, to apples. Um, Ian mentioned already the fact that by making sure we don't have a, a strong ethylene uh, influence, we can reduce pre-harvest fruit drop. Obviously, this does not refer to the push-outs that Veli was referring to. Um, this is where it's a maturity problem. Um, and it also reduces the rate of fruit ripening, um, which is one of the reasons why we can use it as a management tool. And again, um, Ian has highlighted that, that effect. Um, and just as an example, this is work done on flash gala or big bucks. If we look at the control, and you see the, the starch breakdown um, over the three harvest dates. Uh, you can see how high the, the starch breakdown is in the case of the control by, by harvest three. And this is just a, this, uh, a similar um, sit, the situation when you apply the full rate of, of retain uh, 21 days before expected harvest. Um, so you can keep things back, um, use it therefore as a management tool um, to, to make sure that you don't run into logistical problems, but this um, application has to be, if you want to push out the whole um, uh, the harvest, you've got to make, make the application in time. 
Um, we do find the same as with Harvista, increase in fruit size due to this delay in, in harvest. Um, so again, looking at Gala um, and at the final um, harvest there, you can see the, the, because you've delayed the harvest, the fruit had increased in size compared to the, the couple of fruit that remained on the control trees. So really just giving the fruit the time to reach their full potential um, before you do the final pick. Um, very important aspect, um, I, I think you know, Veli already referred to it this morning, that we, a lot of our post-harvest problems come from um, the fact that we have mixed maturities at harvest. Um, and he, I found it very interesting, all the things that he mentioned, and um, agree with what we can do pre-harvest to try and sort out these things. But one, one application also is by using Retain to hopefully get a more uniform harvest maturity. And this is just from some recent work on, on Flash Gala, where you can see the very mixed maturity if you strip pick those trees from the control trees. And even though it's not perfect, by a 21 days before expected harvest application of retain, you definitely have less um, variation in your maturity at that point. So that is one option um, to uh, try and get rid of some of the, the maturity problems, especially in those cultivars where we can't see uh, the, the, the ground color properly because of the uh, a lot of red over, over color. Um, Ian also mentioned the, the situation around red color development. Um, yes, if we apply and um, do not have the right conditions, uh, retain will uh, delay and prevent or reduce color development, and this is just work done on Crips Pink. But th the idea would be to use the full rate of retain um, four weeks before expected harvest, and hopefully then, with a, a longer hanging time, move the fruit into, as a late cultivar, into a period where temperatures will come down, and you will hopefully get that cold front. It's not to say it's going to happen. Um, but the chances are that you will um, move into a situation where you will get better color development um, by delaying the harvest, as well as getting the advantages of, of increased fruit size. And we also do see a, a definite decrease in de greasiness, as was also mentioned by, by Ian with the use of harvester. And then, again, ditto to, to what Ian has already mentioned, uh, the effect of green color, especially in goldens, um, just an example, I don't think it's all that clear, probably from the back, um, there's a, a much improved green color retention on um, fruit that was re treated with, with um, retain. And this is probably for goldens, apart from the harvest management tool, uh, one of the biggest advantages of applying um, retain. One needs to take into consideration a few things. Firstly, um, there are differences in the ethylene production of different cultivars, and typically your galas are, produce more ethylene than uh, most of the cultivars, um, which are sort of med medium producers, whereas uh, Granny and Fuji tend to produce less, um, and that's also why Granny is not as responsive to, to these treatments as, uh, for instance, a gala is. Another point that is very, very important when one goes to the, uh, takes the decision to apply retain is to note that it's a molecule that is relatively difficult to absorb and to penetrate uh, the, the tree. Um, Valent has done a lot of work trying to uh, work on the formulation to improve this, but just in comparison, if you take NAA as a molecule, after 120 hours, you will have 81% uptake. Whereas with retain, you are at 13% after the same time. Okay, it's a very difficult molecule um, to absorb. Um, this is very much influenced by humidity. So if you look at the blue line, you've, that is at 50% humidity, the uptake. If you improve a relative humidity to 100%, you can see the red line. So imp very important, when you do the application, you need high relative humidity in your orchard, otherwise it's, you're wasting money. Um, another 
point is that you can get what, what happens at relatively low or even um, good humidity. You find that the, the molecule will dry on the leaves, crystals, crystallize, um, but if you re-wet the leaf, you will get additional absorption. So re-wetting um, the trees after application is a, a sure way of increasing the uptake and therefore the, 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 the clout that you get from, from the application. There is a um, recommendation for an adjuvant to be added to the application. Um, just very briefly on rate and timing, because it does differ uh, between cultivars. A normal rate would be 830 grams per hectare, and we use that on all cultivars except Gala, where you can go to 550. Uh, water volume, you want good coverage, so talking about a thousand liter per hectare, and very important, it's got to be applied before the start of ethylene production by the, by the uh, fruit or by the tree. So in stone fruit, we're talking about seven to 14 days before the start of optimum or your first major pick, but it also depends a little bit on the different scenarios. Um, this example here, where you have 30% of your fruit in generation one. So you've got these mixed maturities on the fruit, uh, on the tree. You've got fruit that's earlier, you've got fruit that's later in maturing. If you have a, a high percentage of your fruit in the first generation, you've got to apply seven days before that, okay? Otherwise, you're not gonna affect that first generation. Um, in this scenario, you've got very few fruit in the last generation, which you will not affect by that early application. So in this case, you will affect the quality and the firmness of fruit in generation one and two, but not have an effect on, on generation three. Um, if your first generation is a very small proportion of the fruit, then you first pick that fruit and then immediately apply the, the retain afterwards to affect generation two and three. Um, otherwise, you will not, um, if you apply it too early, as you did in the first scenario, you will have um, a, nearly 50% of the fruit in generation three not uh, positively influenced by the application. These are the recommendations for all the other cultivars, the apple cultivars, goldens four weeks, um, red apples three to four weeks, etc. I'm gonna go through each one of them just separately. Um, the recommendation for gala would be 830 grams applied four weeks before harvest. Um, you can go in with 550 um, one week before harvest or seven days before um, harvest, but you will not have an influence on the first generation of fruit. You will pick them as, a, as for the control, but you will delay the harvest of the later fruit. Okay, so it again depends on what you want to do. With the early high rate, four weeks before harvest, you will affect the maturity of all the fruit and delay the complete harvest. If you come in seven days before um, optimum, you're going to not delay the, the early fruit. You'll have to come and pick them out, but you will delay the later generations. Um, on goldens, we can use seed color as an indication. It's the only cultivar we, we say we want about a third of the seed turning brown um, before we apply and we use the full um, rate four weeks before harvest. Um, Crips Pink, again, full rate four weeks, um, but you can also do the same as with a gala, but you still use the full rate instead of the lower rate uh, one week before harvest. Okay, again, not having an e effect on the first pick, but influencing the second and the third, or whatever, how many picks you have. There are a couple of very critical things to take in, into consideration. As I said, it's, it's not a cheap application. Um, you've got to have coverage, but you don't want runoff, okay? So the vo water volume has got to be worked out correctly, but probably even more critical is that you want slow drying conditions. You don't, okay, obviously you don't want wind, but you want high relative humidity, and the fruit temperature has got to be low. Otherwise, the, the product is going to dry on the fruit very quickly and you will get very little absorption. So if you spray late afternoon, the fruit is warm, even though temperatures are coming down, that's not a good idea. Unfortunately, four to six in the morning is when the relative humidity is at its highest. 
the fruit has cooled down overnight, that's when you apply it. Okay, you can um, increase the relative humidity in the orchard by putting on irrigation prior to coming in to apply if uh, Mother Nature hasn't done the job for you. And then consider do a, doing a re-wetting application of pure water, no surfactant added, just water, and you do that 24 to 48 hours after the application of the retain to re-wet those crystals on the leaves and on the fruit to get an additional absorption um, as I indicated on that one graph. Um, the timing, I think there's, uh, you know, we, we have to use history of an orchard to determine, um, because we're working on, on four weeks before optimal harvest date or release. Um, so we're using full bloom dates as an indication, but you've got to have good records um, for specific orchards to be able to estimate when your harvest date will be. You don't use calendar dates. Um, you use the, the uh, indications from the full bloom dates, um, but you do take your orchard history into account. Is it an early orchard compared to some of the other orchards of the same cultivar on the farm? Um, you do fruit analysis over time um, in terms of fruit maturity um, to get an indication of whether the fruit is moving. As I indicated on the goldens, you cut through look at the seed color, but you use, again, your days um, from full bloom as an indication as to when to start to do that. Um, you've got to, as I said, uh, take into consideration that not all orchards are the same. Um, we get quite a big difference between soil types, rootstocks, what the rest breaking program was like, how efficient it was. Again, that influences your full bloom date. Um, and if you want to use it as a harvest management pool, a tool, then you not, would normally obviously select your later orchards to shift, even later, to not clash with um, uh, some of the other orchards. And then very important, when you do apply retain, you don't mix it with anything else. Um, you use water and the adjuvant, and that's it. Um, nothing else goes into that tank. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.